Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Anisia Antoine. This edition's Pop Stories. The Ministry of Health declares an outbreak of dengue fever as cases continue to rise. Staff of school cafeterias receive training on COVID-19 protocols ahead of the new academic year. And the banana sector continues to benefit from the support of the Republic of China, Taiwan. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has declared an outbreak of dengue fever. For weeks, officials have been sensitizing the public on the looming threat of the mosquito-borne viral infection. Nearly 200 cases have been recorded, with several patients requiring hospitalization. Ministry officials say children make up a large number of infected persons. Lisa Joseph reports. National epidemiologist Dr. Michel Fossois says a steady rise in cases of dengue fever has led the Ministry of Health to declare an outbreak. The declaration now warrants immediate and targeted response. As of the week of August 9th to 15th, 2020, there have been 168 confirmed cases of dengue infection. The hospitalization rate has been 46% and case fatality rate remains at 0%. 38% of these reported cases were between the ages of 5 to 14 years. Even more concerning is the fact that both stereotypes 2 and 3 of dengue are in circulation in St. Lucia. The dengue virus is transmitted by female mosquitoes, mainly of the species Aedes aegypti and to a lesser extent Aedes albopictus. The incubation period is 4 to 10 days after bite. 75% of dengue infections are asymptomatic or mild illness. However, the dengue virus can cause an acute flu-like illness that can mimic COVID-19. An infected person can develop severe dengue with bleeding and organ impairment. Severe dengue has a higher risk of death when not managed appropriately. The public health impact of managing a dengue outbreak combined with adjusting to the new normal amid COVID-19 pandemic will place a strain on the already stretched healthcare services. The direct economic cost of treatment, hospitalization and prevention, as well as the indirect costs such as loss of productivity related to absence, disability or death and the effects on the tourism is of concern to an already fragile economy. The Ministry of Health and Wellness therefore solicits the usual cooperation of the public in dealing with this emerging public health threat. Health officials are urging all members of the public to take action and ensure that their surroundings are not breeding grounds for the mosquitoes. Cheryl St. Romain is the Deputy Chief Environmental Officer. Ensure screens are placed or repaired on windows and doors and all vents into your homes. Use insect repellents when both inside and outside the house to prevent mosquitoes from biting. It is important to use products according to directions on the bottle. Mosquitoes can breed even in the tiniest amounts of water. It is said that mosquito can breed in a teaspoonful of water under the right conditions. Once the adult can lay its eggs, it can breed into a, a mosquito. It can breed there. Remove stagnant water around the house so mosquitoes cannot breed. Remember, you are first in line to be bitten by mosquitoes that breed in your home, your own yard and garden. So make sure you be careful and rid your property of breeding grounds. Change water in pet drinking bowls and flower vases at least once a week. And ensure that you rub or scrub these containers to remove any eggs that may be stuck to the side. Regularly clean roof gutters, and now is the opportune time to do that, so, and drain so water runs freely. Ms. St. Romain says water tanks and other containers must be tightly sealed. Mosquitoes can also breed in the containers where your toothbrush holders, your um, dish drainers, any container that is capable of holding water will breed mosquitoes. Fogging is a last resort and it only targets the adult mosquito. So we, as a community, need to play our role. The ministry has noted a concentration of dengue cases in the northern, central and eastern parts of the island. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting.
Final preparations for the opening of the new academic year continued this week with training sessions for the staff of school cafeterias. The training program is aimed at familiarizing the food service personnel with the established COVID-19 protocols for safe operation. More from Jesse Leos. Demonstrations and instructional videos are some of the ways the Department of Education has been engaging school cafeteria operators on the preparation and handling of food. Well, in, in, in light of COVID-19, we are working along with the Ministry of Health, um, especially the Department of Environmental Health, in, in training our cooks, our canteen operators in the proper food handling and food preparation practices in light of COVID-19, um, where they have to now have new protocols that govern the, the use of, of, of different types of foods and also the utensils and so on that are being used. How do they handle those things? So both the preparation and the handling of food. Bernays Koja is the school safety operator at the Department of Education. Training of school cafeteria operators, he says, is the latest of engagements with staff of all schools on island. As school is reopening, we're trying to ensure that all personnel, be it your teacher, principal, cook, janitor, whatever role you play in the school, we have provided some level of training sensitization as it relates to the various protocols that relates to the different tasks that persons do at schools. And so we're just ensuring that as we do this training, we want to ensure that we provide a safe environment for all persons who will be coming to our schools. Earlier in June, school safety sessions in light of COVID-19 were held for ancillary staff and caretaker watchmen. School is scheduled to reopen on September 7, 2020. For the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leons reporting. The banana sector continues to benefit from technical and financial support from the Republic of China, Taiwan. With banana production being negatively impacted due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the governments of St. Lucia and the Republic of China, Taiwan, through the Banana Productivity and Improvement Project, continue to provide financial assistance to banana farmers in St. Lucia. The BPIP entails a full slate of projects and initiatives in the areas of pest control, education and sensitization, among others, geared towards bringing banana production to an optimum level. The banana industry has an annual turnover in trade of approximately $20 million. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Barrymore Felicier, highlighted the importance of the BPIP to the banana industry in St. Lucia. This project is about sustainable livelihoods and the impact on them. And with that project, what we have been able to do is provide income to those farmers and ensure there's an avenue of income. And that income supports the households, that's at least 651 households. So you have an avenue for education, an avenue for health, an av avenue for personal development and growth. And that is what it does. These farmers themselves employ persons. They employ persons and laborers who themselves have ha households. So the spin-off is more than 2,000 persons impacted by this project in the banana sector. Acting Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Honorable Herod Stanislas, expressed gratitude to the government of the Republic of China, Taiwan, for their continuous support. The ICDF came to our rescue and funded a restoration program, which included, one, support for replanting of bananas, weed control, black sikatoka control, plant nutrition, construction of 47 pack houses for the farmers, 15 eating areas, 50 toilets, supplied 130 safety and protective gear, 1,000 record keeping books, and 120 washing trays. These ambassador are a few of the many successes and achievements for the past two and a half years under the BPIP project. And I must say, Ambassador, this wouldn't be possible without the cooperation, the commitment, the dedication 
of Mr. Mario Chen and Mr. Wu, who have worked alongside our technical um, persons in the ministry, alongside Mr. Severin, to achieve this level of success in the industry. Ambassador of the Republic of China, Taiwan to St. Lucia, His Excellency Peter Chen, reaffirmed Taiwan's commitment to providing assistance to banana farmers in St. Lucia. As the global society suffers from economic devastation caused by the COVID-19, food security has become even more pressing issue. In light of this, Taiwan is committed to continue providing assistance to the Banana Productivity Improvement Project. By implementing the PBIP project, the government of St. Lucia and Taiwan also join hands to achieve the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, which says that double the agricultural productivity and income of small-scale food product, uh, producers through productive resources and inputs, knowledge, financial services, markets, and opportunities. The handing over ceremony took place on Tuesday, August 25, 2020, at the Ministry of Agriculture. 200 children in the constituency of ancillary canneries are receiving backpacks filled with school supplies for the new academic year. Minister for Tourism and Parliamentary Representative Honorable Dominic Fede began the distribution with a small ceremony. It is of uh, profound importance um, to continue investing in education. In addition to this um, simple ceremony here today, we also would have been doing a lot of work on the school plant to get it ready for the opening of school. Uh, I know hundreds of thousands are being spent to upgrade various schools in different parts of the constituency so that when our students return to school, that they have an opportunity to be able to have the most pleasing and pleasant uh, surroundings uh, to uh, do their studies. Uh, in addition, uh, we have put uh, computers in uh, very strategic computer labs. We have got the ancillary computer lab back on track. It's been closed for many years because it didn't have computers. We've also given uh, support to the Roso Combined School with additional computers uh, within the area. Uh, we made um, very um, important donations as well to uh, parents in the form of our back to school effort uh, to help with the purchasing of their school supplies. So today is really in keeping with that whole theme of um, helping our parents uh, with the supplies that are necessary for uh, back to school and for helping their kids to go to school. You would recall that um, for about five years running, our government instituted the policy where we have doubled the school transportation subsidy. Our constituency benefited significantly from that. For the first time, we would have had a bus coming for secondary school students between canneries and castries. Many parents would find this extremely difficult because um, it's over $5 um, each way. And um, being faced with a transportation fee of over $10 a day is extremely difficult for a lot of the parents, so we instituted a bus system. Uh, we've also instituted by doubling the school feeding program in various schools as part of our policy to help the education system. And that is instituted in schools island-wide. In other developments, the Cultural and Artistic Fraternity is mourning the loss of former Director of Culture, Michael Orbitin. Minister with Responsibility for Culture and Creative Industries, Senator Honorable Fortuna Bell Rose, says the contribution of Mike, as he was affectionately known, goes beyond just the desk of the Cultural Foundation. He was a Calypsonian educator, writer, and cultural activist. Senator Bell Rose says he was a mentor to many, a charismatic individual with a kind soul and gentle spirit. In 1979 was our St. Lucia reigning Calypso King um, with his feature song, Making Bread on the Dead. Um, I think that is significant, but more importantly, the fact that he served St. Lucia um, as the director of culture. Um, I recall in those years, I myself too was in the Ministry of Culture when he worked um, in that department with Justin Tessin, Helen, myself, um, I think also um, Damien Greaves. Um, we, we worked together with, um, with Mike Orbitin and we saw the beauty of a man, you know, gentle, um, but yet a giant in terms of what he offered. 
you know, um, to the Department of Culture. So, of course, it is with deep regret. Um, we, we really extend sincere condolences to his family, in particular his wife, Rose, um, who has been a great family friend, a great friend to St. Lucia, a great nurse. Um, and, of course, she nursed him. We were sure that she took good care of him because we monitored and checked on her with him um, as, a, as a department, and we are very um, saddened by his loss. Mike Oberton is also known for his album of Creole poetry, Mighty Laughs, and a short story published in The Sun's Eye, an anthology of Caribbean writings. He is the author of Negma War, Freedom Fighter, a novel providing thought-provoking insight into the island's past and how it might inform its society today. Senator Belrose says St. Lucia will be poorer having lost one of its sons who contributed selflessly to its development. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Novella Quayol. In an effort to ensure patient and first responder safety, the St. Lucia Fire Service has reviewed its patient transfer procedures, especially for patients with respiratory distress. Face masks will be provided. At no time during transportation should the face mask be removed. Please be patient and cooperative during this time to ensure you receive the best possible care while keeping our first responders safe. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the Antian Novella Quayol. Masiota Anisia. Monsieur Madame, Département de Responsabilité pour Information à Gouvernement de l'Ici, à CGIS et Télévision Nationale via NTN, à propos de nouvelles à Creole, présenté au Primus Hutchinson. C'est aussi, j'ai la bienvenue à Pouetman, un ambassadeur nouveau de bonne volonté. Programme ambassadeur de bonne volonté, c'est un qui est établi pour le développement et la transformation situation sociale et économique pays et aussi pour aider et développer habiliter les hommes cette ci en tout secteur des créatifs et aussi l'autre secteur qui a supporté principalement en musique sport en musique sport créatif et parmi l'autre wall yo ambassadeur de bonne volonté c'est pour servir principalement popularité et noyo pour aider les autres cette ci qui ont habilité et talent pour ça trouver opportunité pour avancer quoi Ministre de la Kini Responsabilité pour Culture et Industrie des Affaires Créatives, Sénateur Honorable Fortuna Belrose, déclare que c'est ça Claudia Edward Ladner, Jacques a fait pour plusieurs années. Claudia a établi une organisation charitable pour assister les étudiants pour trouver une meilleure façon pour faire des études et aussi les étudiants. Artiste international a aussi bâti chambre pour les étudiants poser là yo pas senti bien à l'école et aussi bâti un sat à l'école première Ave Maria et yo chambre de théâtre à l'école secondaire Cicero en parmi plusieurs autres projets selon ministre Belrose gouvernement tout plaît et qu'a apprécié autant qui Claudia a décidé pour accepter responsabilité ça là il dit que des gré expérience et capacité à tout cela qu'a aidé autant pour voser l'on est pays cette ici en façon côté qu'a ça aidé cette ici pour développer talent et capacité Expérience internationale. C'est leur Claudia. Et fois ça a commencé, après ne vieillit, tu es fait plein de chambres d'école qui partaient confortables et tu as une cause les pour sentir malade. Par conséquence de ça, Claudia et puis si pour Sharon Williams approché le ministère de l'Éducation pour commencer le projet ça à l'école. Il dit qu'il trouvait un bon coup de support pour le ministère de l'Éducation. Le département de l'industrie, de l'économie et de la culture a annoncé que. Claudia a représenté cette ici très bien et a ouvert chemin pour plusieurs autres artistes pays, pays pour trouver l'occasion pour des pauvres familles à pays international. Le département a rapporté que Claudia et Orchestre a fait un peu de succès à ce pays chinois, particulièrement en Thaïlande et aussi à fait de jazz à cette ici même. Durant la cérémonie de l'honneur, on a dit le 21 août, le gouverneur général de cette ici, son nouvel snack, pour et puis médaille de l'or ou de gré contribution et ça a accompli. Claudia aussi reçu un passeport diplomatique pour le cabinet de ministre du gouvernement. Ambassadeur Claudia Edward Ladner qui a été mis position sur pour trois années. 
pour saison l'école neuf en septembre. Le ministère de l'Éducation a placé plus attention à sa construction en façon de protection de santé. Ce que le permanent ministère de l'Éducation, Michel Charles, a expliqué qui, malgré le cas, essaie d'adresser toutes nécessités à cette école-là, mais pour saison neuf, ça là, attention, c'est pour bâtir plus de place pour les étudiants servis pour laver la main avec leurs nécessités qui ont porté protection à la bataille contre la maladie corona. Selon Mme Charles, tous les années, le ministère de l'Éducation a adressé la réhabilitation à toute l'école. Mais pour l'année ici, plus de pèse qui a été affaire de santé à l'école. En chaque école, il y a plus de pour ces mamans-là, ça a lavé la main avec tout le monde comme ça. Nous avons essayé que aussi. Um, tout ces plombines, ces, ces, ces washrooms, là, tout le en ordre. Donc, so, laissez maman la vie à l'école. Tout ces um, façons ça, kai, pour, kai, nous avons ça. Donc, so, tout le bagage, mm. um, les parents pas dire pour concerner tout le bagage, c'est ça. Nous avons tout le là, um, tout le là, pas kai, jamais fini. Fait, oui, um, nous pas ça fait tout l'année non plus, mais nous savons, nous avons essayé de faire tout ça nous paye pour ça ne pas affecter. Um, um, l'école car um, um, maman est retournée à l'école. Okay. Et l'autre producteur, j'ai un arrangement en place pour commencer à vendre produits en Ouijan Kouibla, bon finissement, moi ça là, ça c'est à où. Forest Springs, qui a produit de l'eau naturelle, j'ai trouvé et tout dit, pour des business qui n'ont l'intérêt à produire, ça a été possible par Export saint ça c'est après plusieurs mois de négociations. L'occasion, ça a été possible au résultat de la mission des affaires business qui était pris en ces versants, plus bonne est l'année ici. Côté Export saint Lucia, il y a aussi un bon succès, malgré le représentatif pour le Spring Party présent, mais des y a une recherche qui est déjà faite et une assistance technique pour Export saint Lucia. L'occasion est une discussion pour commencer, côté de ces places de business, la moutue et l'intérêt. Premier shipment pour ces versants avec Dominique, qui a porté 2300 kits en différents gossets. Deuxième batch là, qui a eu 2 millions pour Dominique en mois de septembre. Le directeur de Forest Springs dit qu'il était prêt pour l'initiative de trouver un succès et une possibilité pour l'année d'augmentation en quantité de sa vente. Il a ajouté que la panne pièce de doute qui produit est en haute qualité parce qu'il y a un produit de l'eau qui est très haut et de bonne qualité. Il remercie Export saint Lucia pour pousser à l'intérieur le chef Export saint Lucia. Sonita Daniel dit que la maladie COVID n'a pas eu assez d'agences là et qu'en pile, on s'est succès à trouver en consultation et puis c'est vers ça. C'est du bout pour un bon droit parce que ces gens qui sont là, c'est qu'il y a une maladie corona. Mais, Mme Daniel dit qu'il continue à pousser avec succès. Avec succès, Forest Springs, c'est manifestation, c'est effort ça là. Et c'est comme ça, nous avons une nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant de regarder. Donc, il y a une invitation pour que je ne puisse pas encore considérer qu'on se fait la vie dans les présentations de l'autre nouvelle à Coyola. Après ça, on va vivre les présentations à Nice. Merci à Peel Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Anissia Antoine.